Be heading outside now, got to bust down some pallets, got a heap of that to do. Um, why am I telling you this? Because occasionally people like to tell me I'm using fake pallets. Anyway, there they are. Already assembled, ready to go, look like pallets. I've now got to pull them apart and make them look like wood again. <laughs> it's pretty hot outside. Um, insulation and a fan. Woo. Anyway, you'll notice all the nails are in here still. I'm going to chop them down about 1,500 each. Some of these are... Some of these are nearly three meters long. So I'll chop them down, avoiding the nails, and then I can come back, they'll be more, more easily to handle, and I can shoot the nails out with any luck. Shoot the nails out. Stay tuned for that. My last video was all about how I pull pallets apart and I got to show you this thing. It's a pneumatic denailer. Now, Mr. Steve Cortez, he bought this for me because he got sick of watching me struggle bashing out nails all the time. So can't thank him enough. What a legend. All right, here we go. So we've got some really long bits of timber on my straightening jig. Now, that was a bit of a stretch. Then I realized that way back I made an extension fence, which has made it a little bit better. Uh, you can actually get the board right through and it's well supported off the fence. Then I also remembered that I have a push stick making it even safer again. So with that done, I can then rip every single slat into two and I maximise my timber from the pallet. All right, first run with the uh, new spiral cutter head. Let's see how less noisy it is. Now you're going to have to take my word for this because no one wants to listen to my thickness of screaming away, but it was a dramatic difference. I'm just going to shut the door. Take the edge off. The old one was like a jet engine taking off. This, I've got single hearing protection. Um, it quietens up as you load it up. It's fantastic, I love it. There's a game I like to play, it's called Have I Got Enough? Doesn't really matter, because I've got some other ideas. Technically, I've got enough. Now, there are a lot of pieces with this black stuff running through them. I'm gonna pull a lot of it out because it, when the stain goes on, it looks a little bit average. This is the framework off those massive pallets and um, it's the same beautiful timber. Uh, nice chunky pieces. That's gonna let me mix up the thickness variation in these slab tops. So I'm just gonna smack these apart because I don't wanna waste them, they're awesome. For the big thick boards, I've got my second sled, uh, this style with the hold down clamps. Um, yes, I could use the jointer that's behind me, but that's not what this is about. This is showing you how to do it basically with your table saw and a bit of an extension fence. Um, this makes a heap of mess. You just got to accept it unless you've got an overhead dust collecting arm of some sort. Okay, I've done some of these boards on the jointer, but I actually had to do most of them on the sled because they had just too much of a bow. It was, it was taking too long on the jointer anyway. So a couple of tips um, that I've just figured out. You need really good outfeed um, to support your sled. Your sled needs to be as long as possible. So with the board hanging out the front, it does get a little bit of vibration at the start. So be aware of that, hold on and take your time. And also good infeed is a bit of a secret. Not ideal without that nice long sled but it can be safely done if you have a good think about it. I have a heap of these boards that are completely bowed. Now, they'll clamp up just fine, but what I'm gonna do to mix up the thickness variation is I'm gonna just whack on a feather board. Um, I'm gonna rip all of these ones down to a nice thin strip and all the pieces that I, that I discarded yesterday that have a lot of that black coloration through them, which stains up pretty ordinary. I'm gonna rip those down. I may be able to um, salvage a few strips off one side of those as well. Okay, so you can see I've got this long board that's actually laying over the top of my table saw. Actually was starting to sag down on the ends. So I've just got a couple of clamps here to pull that board down in the middle. Uh, and then I'll just check that it's actually level along the clamps. Alrighty, so a few tips. 
Always make sure your sauce bottle is full before you start. Silicon spatula, invaluable. And the other main tip, make sure you've got a bit of sawdust on the floor if you're gonna slide. I'm not actually very coordinated. The secret is, it's actually the sawdust. And I couldn't do it without it, so. Although I just upgraded my thicknesser to the spiral cutter header, heady thing, um, which would absolutely annihilate these slabs. I'm just gonna take it a little bit easy on the first few because I don't like to load the thing up with the big, broad pellets. Uh, you can take 330 mil, but I'm just gonna take it easy. There you go. Oh, can't do the left, left leg slide. Can't do it. Okay, so this is your chance to pull out any dodgy ones you don't like. You get a second chance or a third chance to really create a good side and a dodgy side. You know how much footage I have of me pulling the top off this? These are pretty long slabs and I'm gonna be pretty buggy if I keep sliding. And I probably look like a bit of a dickhead. Silicon spatula. Where has this been all my life? You can see how bendy that piece is. That's gonna be no drama once these clamps go on. Truth be told, I'm, I'm gonna cut the slide away because I've actually got a fitness test tomorrow for my real job. And uh, it's been a slow year for the old fitness on the corona lockdown, I must say. You'll probably often hear the question, how much pressure is enough on the clamps? Generally, just firm so the glue just starts to squeeze out. With these ones, where there's all sorts of wonky donkey action going on, you wanna be tightening up until you just hear something go bang around here. Um, generally, that's good enough. I was just tightening the clamp up. I hadn't even moved the back of it. <laughs> Hello, dickhead. So see all this up and down action? That is gonna cost me extra runs through the thicknesser. So I'm just gonna keep tapping them down as flat as possible. And they should all come in because this has all been squared up um, pretty nice. Okay, it's time to flatten the slabs. I'm gonna use my thicknesser. Um, how I used to do it was just with a router and a sled backwards and forwards making a heap of mess. Uh, I've got a heap of those sorts of bits of footage on my Instagram and it's probably in some of my old videos as well. What you will notice is there is a lot of ridge and troughs on this particular slab, so not it's not my best glue up. Uh, I did smack it with a hammer a fair bit, but, but that's okay. I have got a fair bit of thickness so I can afford to lose because this is a, I don't want this dining table to be too heavy anyway. So generally there'll be a good side and an ugly side, but sometimes they'll reveal themselves in a different way once they start getting flattened out. So generally I'll just start rotating it through the thicknesser. Uh, just to see which one I like the best. All right, also, uh, this is the first time using the spiral cutter head on the big slabs, and um, so pretty interested to see how that goes. Okay, and spoiler alert, it absolutely annihilated these big slabs. So, yes, it was an expensive upgrade and one that was driven by noise, but, Jesus, it is phenomenal. Sticker sponsor shout out is Riley at La Palette Enterprise, mate. Thanks for your support over all the years. You're already on the wall with all the other legends. All right, and now this is one of my slabs. It's all done. So I'm just now jointing the edges. Um, unfortunately, I have a jointer. What you can do is use your track saw, um, set yourself up a nice straight edge to cut your first side, and then chuck it on the table saw, get all your slabs nice and parallel, all squared up. Then they're all gonna glue it together really nice. These big long slabs, although a little bit trickier to handle, they really do scrub up nicely. Um, if you don't have these big ones, go and check out my other two videos. One's about making small bricks of pallets. The other's about making these big slabs, but using all different lengths of the pallets or however you happen to cut them off and whatever sizes you've end up with, you can end up with something like this with a really nice pattern through it. Okay, so if I get sorted, there'll be a playlist now for all of this series of my pallet slabs and how-tos, I guess. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed them. 
fun. Also, uh, everyone that's jumping on and subscribing, really appreciate it. That is helping me massively. Uh, you might not have any idea, but it's really helping my channel. It helps support everything that you see I'm doing in the shed here. Much appreciated. Now all my videos, you've got to see a little bit of finish going on. Because these aren't done, next video is about the dyeing tabletop. Let me just throw on a bit of mineral turps so you can see the, uh, the stunning colour that's going to come out of these fellas. So there you go. Um, you will notice there are heaps of voids and I'm even going to create some more on these edges. Um, so this tabletop, it's going to get some like epoxy resin colour tints, if you will. Um, but again, that'll all come together when I put this together and build the tabletop. Okay, that's really it now. Thanks very much. Really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, what's next? The big table. See you then.